Keyed In with Max and Brent, unlocking the minds of the industry's top real estate professionals. And now, here are your hosts, Max Rabin and Brent Jackson. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Keaton Podcast. I'm Max Rabin. And I'm Brent Jackson. Brent, today we have Yanni Kifle from wh- which brokerage? Uh, Keller Williams. You're with Keller Williams. Center, yep, and Tyson's. Nice. Yep. Um, I think I, I think I, think we connected. I, lo- I looked yeah. you up, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we connected, uh, uh, I think maybe TikTok or yeah. Instagram. Yeah. But not a deal. Huh? No, it wasn't a deal. a deal. I think I think maybe you might have been on a list of other m- people doing a lot of media. Yeah, and uh, maybe I think it was a chase. Uh, maybe there was a that chase. That was it. Uh, it might have been the chase uh, thing. Um, yeah, promotion type of things. Yeah, I think you saw that we we did. Yeah, I did one of the the videos as well. Nice, so, nice, yeah. very good. Yeah. Um. So welcome to the show. Thanks Thank for coming you. down today. No, it's an honor to be here. Um. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started in real estate? Give us a little bit of background. Yeah. Um. So. I'll Kind of just do a quick, quick story. Um, um, originally from, I'll just tell you, my, originally from Ethiopia, but I grew up in this area. Uh, went to school in the Tennessee area um, and played ball. And that what was kind of ball? Be basketball, sorry. Okay. Yeah, that one, I, I, always, I love basketball. basketball. Yeah. My, I, I played, played hoops every week. Uh, yeah, I played in college and in, in, in the Milligan College in, in East Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was going to be the path. I uh, was going to want to go overseas, play. That didn't kind of work out. Um, so next thing is I wanted to kind of coach uh, basketball. So started coaching at uh, Division three school, St. Mary's College of Maryland, out in St. Mary's County, beautiful campus, and uh, did that, kind of got burnt out. And so I said, you know, I want to kind of uh, get back to the area. I wanted to take care of some personal items on this, in this side as well. So came back, started working in the Department of Education, uh, went into it thinking, hey, this is going to be a good career. Um, got to you know, it's 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 stable. It's gonna be good. Went into it, and and I just immediately hated it. It was, just wasn't me, that cubicle guy. And so I was I was just like, what what can I do? Um, started. I was always kind of interested in real estate and just kind of personal things. Uh, but started looking into it more of a business aspect. And um, I said, let's go. So studied, took my uh, uh took the class and and passed the test, and then left within like two weeks. And uh, all I did was just went into the, at that time was the Keller Williams uh, Kingstown office. I just sat into the, the broker's office and just tried to absorb as much as much as I can. So that that was it. When did you start? That was uh, what, the 20, 2010. So it was, yeah. So almost. Yeah, so we were coming out of the bottom of the financial yeah, crisis. Yeah, yep, yep. The beginning of the great bull market, right? <laughs> yeah. Where are we now? Um, so when you started, yeah. did you, were you on a team or did you shadow? Have no, no, I was, just, I was on, by myself. I just literally sat in my broker's office and I just tried. And then. From that point, after a few months, me and a couple of guys, uh, we decided to kind of team up and, and kind of started on that. That eventually didn't kind of work out and just started on my uh, my path as well again. So do you remember your first deal? My first, I know that because my first deal was one of my best friends. And nice. uh, and I, his name is Andy. I grew up with him, went to school, you know, elementary school. Uh, but um, him and his fiance at the time were buying. And so, he, you know, I credit him for a lot of things because he had a lot of pressure. His fiance, his parents were like, "You sure? You know, this, you sure you want? This is his first deal." But uh, you know, he gave me the opportunity, and uh, since then, you know, we've helped him out four times. You know, so like that was my my first deal. Yeah, and that that was seven seven months into my into my uh, since I got my license. So it, it took seven months to get to get that first deal. And that's a great question. So seven months, and it's a lot of new agents starting up. Yeah. How are you funding yourself to live? Yeah, no, it was months? it was tough at that time too. I was, you know, when I moved back, I I I, I, um, I lived with my parents. It was it was it was dark, you know. It was um, it was you know, you st- I still part of the reason I started was to take care of my folks as well. They were going through some stuff, and so but now here I was being a a, a burden, you know, in a sense. So um, it was just kind of living on any savings that I had. Didn't have as much, um, you know responsibilities and one of the one of the books that really kind of helped me say all right it's now or never it was uh, uh rich dad poor dad sure you know it says the, 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 yeah it is a great book the rat race of you know they said w- the older you get it's harder to take risks so you have a lot of other responsibility you have a wife kids and it's, it's hard i mean you're gonna put that but i was willing to when you're young or, or you're when you don't have as much responsibilities you're okay suffering right at least it's it's, it's just gonna be you and so you're willing to do that, so I was like, you know, this is now or never. So that was it. But it was really just, just scraps, and I think some, you know, and I don't really count even rentals. I probably done maybe a, like a rental here and there, but um, just scraps and people kind of helping out and just kind of 
being skinny as much right. as possible. Yeah. So when did it click? When did it was like go time? You know, I think uh, like um, going into my honestly going to like a year and a half and whatnot, and and just kind of you know that's when I really started kind of social media as well, just you know posting success stories or doing like videos. So I think that was, and it didn't really get consistent until like the third year, but like, mm. you know, at least I can kind of see things happening a year and a half kind of going into it, you know? So, um, like I said, it was, it was, a, it was a different market as well. I mean, it was kind of on the up and up, but it was, it wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't like a great, great market. Well, I, um, so I want to dive right into that media stuff because you, um, you got a gentleman with you today getting yeah. some B roll stuff. You yeah. do a lot of video. I mean, I think you you post really often too. I was going through your Instagram. Yeah. It's almost like it's very up to date. Like every streaming. yeah, yeah. So we tr I try to post, and again, you know, he's been, uh, we've been working together for a year and a half. But mm -hmm. before that, that was just me, just you know, just doing that on my own. And and you got to, like I said, I, I tell people like, where do I start? Just start. You know, my first video was at an open house. I was nobody was there, so I just started doing a video, and it's mm -hmm. just kind of stayed consistent with that. But um, yeah, we 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 do a bunch of you know batch recording uh where the informational videos that we do we try to do you know 20 to 25 at a time and just kind of just post regularly at least um twice yeah a I wonder, day. let's let's break this down a little bit because you've got like i took some notes okay yeah. so you've got like um a lot of stuff where you're like sort of just reporting the real estate news you're talking about interest rates you're very like i said very up to date yeah. very on top of things yeah so so those are your like informational type so pieces I informational videos are some of the ones where we're just kind of just talking i'm you know i'm i'm it looks more professional it's not me like on a, we call those the green screen the green screen is i'm always looking at what's happening in the dmv right mm -hmm. um whether it be actual real estate or you know attractions or different things because i think a lot of real real estate agents forget we're community experts not just you know Townhouse or single family, it was right. like not just kind of real estate. When you think about real estate, is the area that you live in, and what's happening in the area. So like, so anything that's kind of happening in the DMV is something that I'm interested in. Um, and is it worth noting? Is it worth something that's valuable to somebody that they would that that they would want to know? And so I I create create those and then just send it to him. He puts the green screen and on. Right. We we actually I go. He has a studio. I go into. And we do the actual information where I'm actually reading from a teleprompter. Um, that gets brutal sometimes with many takes, as he would probably attest, many, many takes. You can, but, edit, uh, you can edit to your heart's content. I, edit, I know, I know. And I, and I liked, he says, you know, we could do different takes. I was like, no, let's just knock it out one time, one time through the yeah. video. But um, so we do we do that. Um, you know, we do home tour videos. Uh, yeah. uh, business Spotlight is another good one I think people love just spotlighting different businesses in the area mm -hmm. and talking with the owners and just kind of highlighting any any business that's worth mentioning. So different things like that. Um, also, you got fun. the motivational stuff. Motivational. Too. I love the motivation. Uh, um, so I've, I've been doing that for a while. And I, I do that mostly for me as well because, you know, it, this Keep industry can, can beat up. you up. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, so motivational that as well. Well, there was one you had that, you know, it didn't have any comments on it, but it was like the it was the perfect motivational thing. It's like you basically you are what you do. You, you yeah. gravitate. Whatever you gravitate towards, that's who you that, your are. Your priority, yeah. yeah. You, you don't look at you know what somebody says. You, your priority, you always right. make time for what you what's a priority to you. So, uh, but uh, yeah. So I mean, that's just things that's either on my heart where I think that that's important. Like I said, I I'm just kind of I'm always kind of writing down what's motivational things I see that kind of speak to me. Yeah, and things and and I think that might be help people. But still, so. I mean, it's it's a lot of work to put all that together. To yeah, keep, to keep it fresh and to keep like the vibe, you know. So it's like you, you people look at it, they see you, and they're like, you're projecting the right kind of yeah. aspect, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have you have to work, right? I mean, it, it, that's a, a lot of people come into this industry. You know, I have new agents that that join the team. They, I was like, the first thing I say is, this is not, this is not HGTV. This is not, you know, just opening doors. You, you're gonna work. Nobody sees the work that mm -hmm. happens. Nobody sees the transactions that fall apart. Nobody sees the, the calls you have to make. Nobody sees the door knocking, the open houses. You know, n n that's not highlighted in those HGTV shows, you know, selling right. sunsets. All of this is this is real estate. Yeah. You know, this is real estate. And so there's work to it. That's the least I can do. And I tell you, the least you could do is social media. Like, that, that's the easiest thing. Right. I mean, it's literally the easiest thing, right? I mean, you knock out, you can knock out anything pretty quickly on, on social media. I mean, there's videos and stuff that takes a little bit more work, but that's, that's the, if you don't have any clients, if you don't have anything, the least you could do is at least. Yeah, it's all available. Everything, yeah, push, everything, push everything looks up. so sharp now with the technology. Yeah. It's so easy to yeah, do. Yeah, you don't, I, I, I mean, the phones, everything. I mean, you know, so it's, um, 
Yeah, that's, that's the least you could do. So, but I think it's you have to de- definitely stay uh, dedicated to that. So with that, I guess this is a question for both of you guys. Were you guys, because you're both natural on camera, did you guys start out that way, both you and Max? Because I know we just started doing that with our team, and I think I did probably 20 takes on different topics. Yeah. And my team was like, Brent, we're not pushing that out. You're terrible on camera. I'm <laughs> like, all word? right, well, at least you're honest. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm, I guess, uh, natural, but I just I just said this is, you know, I, I said this is what I have to do. I mean, I think this is a great way. I, I, I could see initial on that video was a way to kind of go. Just just uh, whether you're in front of the camera or just providing some sort of value through video that are that's engaging. So I just I, this is so I, I just that we have to I have to do this. So any tips for the listeners? Because I know when I was doing it, they're like you're too stiff. It's like you're looking directly at the camera, yelling at the camera. I had a mic here, and like yeah. I just need to tone it down and have a conversation with somebody on the other end. I was like like a deer in headlights. Yeah, no, I think maybe some people are more more natural than others, but I I think if you just do it, it's just. It's not about portraying somebody else. It's just being you mm-hmm. and just providing some sort of value. But I think if you consistently just kind of do it, it's just you'll you'll get the hang of it, I, I guess. Or I think it it'll kind of come out and be, be a little bit more natural. Um, I think it takes practice, like anything else. Yeah, you just got to keep yeah. doing it and and believe in yourself that like what so. you're what you're what you're putting out is yeah. okay. And I think it's, don't worry about it. Exactly. And I think it's if you're providing value, you know, if you build it, like they will come. Right. If you provide value, I think people will find it engaging no matter like you know so there's people that you watch maybe on on camera that are maybe more dry than others but right. they provide value so like you like it's it's valuable and you know that's they have a lot of subscribers and followers engagement so i think it's not just about like, just kind of just a personality yeah and there's some know? some wacky stuff on there too yeah. that you're like that that is what gets all yeah, the likes no, and the no. looks I mean, it's incredible tiktok tiktok is a different animal right sure. i think tiktok is way different than Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, TikTok TikTok's is just, like thing. it's a whole yeah, it's it's a whole different animal. I can see Max. There's this SNL skit probably like <laughs> thirty years ago, but it was I can't remember. It's Pat. It was like Phil Hartman. Oh yeah. In the mirror, it's I'm Pat. good enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it, people Dug like me. People I like can me. see Max in the mirror <laughs> yeah. doing that every time. I think you got you got to do that. Yeah, you got to do whatever. You right. Know, you got to do whatever. To get your psyche psych well, yourself up. I'll, I'll, okay, uh, for for our listeners and whatever, um, I would say that also. If you if you do have like a TikTok or or Instagram, if you just go on live, just going on live yeah. and seeing if anyone comes on and starts asking you questions, that's a really good way to just improv your way into yeah. something and get comfortable with just being off the cuff. It is, and, and it I don't know, it's like a little nerve wracking at first, it but is. then you get more natural at it. Yeah, and it, it, it it's it's the best way to kind of grow as well because mm-hmm. that's what keeps in, in your, yeah, your keeps followers engagement. Engage, engagement, and I, I have to be better at that as well. Uh, have but you yeah, done that before? I, we have, yeah. We, I, I used to kind of do a little bit more regularly, and then like kind of, you know, the, the life kind of kind of gets in the way. But yeah, uh, live is is a great way. Um, I've done mine mostly on 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 TikTok, just kind of yeah. just stand, yeah. just a. Well, they have random. a whole section of live that people really just scroll through. Yeah, they'll just find through, you. They'll yeah, find so you. Find, um, so Instagram, like, what are you doing on live? Answering questions. Talking. So like, you just talk. So like, I, I think maybe you start out with the topic, but inevitably. People kind of direct you different places. So I, I might say, let's just say, um, first time home buyer programs in, in in specific areas. And so kind of, you know, we, we start on that topic. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll kind of go into some of the points that I have. And then from that point, you know, people are asking questions. So then from, you know, you're just answering questions before you know it. Sometimes you're somewhere else, but you're still, that, you, you know, engagement is great. With regards to the algorithm, though, from what I understand, if you, whenever I post, I do about two posts a week on TikTok. I used to post every day when yeah. I first started, but now it's like two a week. I don't feel like that's about as much as I can handle. Yeah, yeah. If I post something that I feel like is going to go viral for whatever the content is, if it's a type of house that, yeah. you know, or something super high yeah, end. Yeah, I've seen it. It's pretty good. It's, yeah, it's great. so that's, I'll go on live. Yeah. Because the engagement should, uh, okay. like, increase. You do the, the live as you're scrolling through the house? or So, so no, I'm, oh. so what I'm saying is I'll, I'll make the post. Post and then go live. Yeah, and I so I don't. I'll check the engagement on the post, and you can usually tell pretty quickly. Oh, it, yeah. So I usually, for me, it's a ratio. So if it's got like a thousand views within an hour, and um, if it's a thousand views and between a hundred and two hundred likes, that's ex- that's, that's that's going, going that's a near that's viral, viral. Yeah. right? So that's you can usually tell if things are gonna like ratchet yeah. up, and then yeah. that's a good time to hit no, the that's, live. That's actually, if you have time. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not, I got like I said, I got to get better with with lives, but, but it it's a great way to kind of engage and, and get kind of growing followers and just kind of adding value so i'm just mesmerized by this so on your algorithm right there you've got a thousand views 200 likes you're driving down the road 
You're just gonna go live. If I have time, I, I might. I have done. I absolutely pulled done. over and gone online. Yeah, I've absolutely done that. The other day, I was sitting in my dining room, like doing some work, and like I posted something, and I was like, "Oh, this is going fast." Yeah. And so I just it. went on live. I had I had like a half hour to kill. Actually, I was late for an appointment because of that. I was late to like I was supposed to get a haircut, and the, the salon's calling me in the middle of my live, like, "Um, are you coming?" I was like, oh, "Shit." You know. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of funny, but um. So how do you even fun, open that? Though. Do you say like, "Hey, it's Max here. I'm going live." Well, you just get on there. No, you just get uh, on there. You just get on there. You're like, "Hey, anyone has any questions about real estate?" That's it. And yep. then you just start talking. You're yeah. just like, "Well, today I did this," and people just start engaging. They engaging. start asking you questions. They ask you questions, and then, like I said, then you're just answering people's questions, and then it just becomes a Q and A type of thing. Right. Totally. But that, that's what I think. Just kind of go into that. I think you, you can't overthink social media. Like even right. like, there's Honestly. people that are doing better better things. Or you're more quiet. But like when you start out, just just start talking about what you know to talk about or what what you what's important to you or you know what you feel like you can contribute and then you can kind of just grow from there Brent, i honestly i could see you going on a live and if 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 you got the uh, enough engagement and then someone could switch the topic to basketball you could be in full basketball uh, yeah, conversation I mean, full basketball for a while and then yeah. you'd have all these people Are on there asking guy or nba uh nba guy yeah okay yeah. so um, after the- this i'm hoping that because the, the mavericks play tonight Usually the oh, Mavericks they're, they're, are staying at the Ritz. Yeah, right. and Mark okay. Cuban we usually see at the gym. Sometimes the Mavericks will play with us. Nice. So uh, we'll see. Look but the that. Okay. basketball. You going forever. to the game? Yeah. Yeah. Going to the game. Up until up until last year, we had at season tickets. We we used to give out and whatnot. And Wizards are, are, are crazy with, with pricing sometimes. They're, yes, they are. They, there's no reason to increase price and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, no, I love ba- basketball. So. I, I used to have season tickets. I had them for years. I had them. Uh, my dad had them for years at the old US Air Arena. Oh wow! Yeah, the wow, back in the wow. day. And then I took them when he moved away. I took them uh, over, and then I had them for the Jordan years, which was like that was like a party every that night. Was, it was, even though they weren't that great. It no, was just MJ. Jordan in town. It's MJ, yeah. And then <laughs> and then you know like, like it's the year after he retired again. That like I remember going back to the first game, and it was, it was just empty. It was, yeah. it was empty. Yeah, and I, I was like, oh man, just came. Agent Zero. Uh, I could imagine. Yeah, I could imagine. yeah. That's until awesome. Gilbert Arenas. Yeah, that was the next yeah, era. Yeah, you can talk about that too. So yeah. well, you know. So on the uh, you know back on the social media. If you guys are engaged with these followers, they're asking questions, do you then somehow capture the data, put them in some sort of a CRM database and you're following up with them because they're asking like really good real estate questions? Yeah, so for us, we have like a link tree type of uh, uh, contact list where they can, you know, put in their information. If, you know, it's up until now, you can correct me, like you couldn't, you couldn't message somebody directly like if you didn't even follow on them, like tiktok on tiktok you can message that if they follow you i think they, yeah, they if, can message you and then that way they can engage yeah like if they don't follow you or if so you can message them to try to maybe somebody had but you you could obviously reply you can reply on, reply back to their comment right. and say hey we'd love to could definitely help you with this shoot me an email or dm me i just uh, I, I just tell people like if someone hits me up on uh any any of those um different platforms i just say go to my link tree i have a contact form yeah and then that sort of makes it more legitimate. More, yeah, exactly. And, and so it kind of makes it more, uh, I guess, has a, a routine and, mm-hmm. and a system to it. So yeah, there's a link tree. They they plug in that information, and then link tree. Then obviously sent through email, and then we follow up from there. So that yeah Much makes easier. it more. And I think those people, are the ones that take the time to do that, are the ones that are more serious. As Nailed well. that. So, yeah. You know, you don't want to. You know, uh, so much you want, lo- so much loose stuff out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. So I think you know you can get overwhelmed with that. So I think you have to have a, a system where right. the people that are. Take those action items are the ones that at least have some, some level of interest and they raise their hands. Always. So um, tell us about, so you're in the DMV area, but like what, it, like if we put the heat on our old school home snap, which we no longer have I anymore. If we put the heat map com. on you, yeah. 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 If we put the heat map on you, like what's your area? Like where do you, do you have a niche area that you work um, in? So uh, like I said, I, you know, the, the team in a sense, like a majority of, especially the beginning years was Northern Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now like it's, it's kind of, I think Montgomery County, uh, in PG County, yeah. it's kind of overtaken a little bit, and then Northern Virginia, and then uh, you know DC comes in third. But um, okay. we do a lot of uh, a handful of multifamily in DC as well. Um, so I would say, I mean, it's really like a, a mixture. I would say, but Maryland this year I think has kind of surpassed Northern Virginia and DC. I think I was looking Fort Washington was your top neighborhood or you know jurisdiction, but then I was looking, it was like. Bell City going up ninety five, yeah, and then kind of around the Beltway. Yeah, the, going the, the name your your DMV team is is for a reason, right? You know, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's not Department of Motor Vehicles; it's DC, Maryland, Virginia, right? And so you know, have agents and that live in pretty much everywhere throughout those areas, and that kind of are focused on those different specific areas and and whatnot. So, Do you used to use yes. Homes Home Snap? 
Um, I, I don't. I don't think we utilize it too much. Um, it's gone away. It's one of the things like Max and I. Would, or a lot of agents just look. You would look at homesnap.com, so you can pull up an agent, and you can even see like if we've done a deal together. And yeah. You can see like the last two years. Home transactions. That's gone now. Homesnap Pro. I mean, essentially, uh, CoStar. CoStar owns homesnap.com. Okay. That's yeah. com, but for whatever reason, I guess they had a falling out with GCar. So it's no longer allowed in our uh, jurisdiction, but oh. CoStar also owns Homes.com, which is the sister to they, Homes. They just, they just bought that recently, right? Yeah, so they're trying to drive the traffic over there. and so That's I'll, a whole other topic on yeah, like, what's is. coming down the pipeline. That is. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, but I, I'll tell you that um, Homes – okay, so HomeSnap I thought was really useful, especially for researching other agents, which we all would enjoy doing. Um, and then the other thing that I was doing with it was um, – Scheduling showings. You could scheduling showing is very oh, easy. You, you, yeah, I mean it, everything was connected very well and very easy to use. Great interface. Um, one thing though that I was doing was I've been sending letters to different farms, uh, just looking for properties to sell to my developers or other yeah. buyers, and I could very easily research who was like on do not call lists or mm. the like the actual names of the occupants and yeah. who was there through HomeSnap versus like cluster maps and all these other websites i know there are other services you can pay for yeah. but it's you, you know what i'm saying yeah i get it and yeah. then if you're looking in the mls tax records usually those are very jumbled you don't have a real name i like to try to make it just a little more personal and yeah. try to actually know who i'm reaching out to yeah homestap was really good at that um, and now it's you, there's no homestap pro so it's like you go there and there's still information there but you can't dig dig yeah yeah okay yeah anyway. no, i was i wasn't too in depth with that but now i I, I I think some of our agents were using it, but yeah. yeah. So what do you use as far as like MLS as your go to database? Yeah, just yeah. in terms of just like everything you're doing. Everything online? you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty yeah. much. I was using everything on the home snap. Like you could pull Same. down documents, schedule the showings. Again, you could look at an agent and pull up like who's this listing agent or an offer just came in, who's the buyer agent? They've done one deal in their entire life. Like, yeah. I don't know about that one. So. Yeah. Well, I mean that Again, MLS put out this other product, um, the MLS Touch product, and I've used it a, f a handful of times. I, j I just don't like the interface. The search function is just, it's, it's archaic. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Um, so so uh, coming back, switching gears. Uh, so you started 2010. You're on your own for a while, uh, worked with some guys. So over the years, you've developed a really strong team. Can you kind of tell us the makeup of your team? Yeah, and, 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 our, and our business is predominantly has been buyers. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, my first agent, uh, D, uh, was based in in, um, in in Maryland, and so, you know, I was getting to a point where, you know, you get to a point where you can't really service everybody, and especially areas, you know, it's just gonna be tough. You're, you're stretched too thin, and so I just I, I I met this guy by chance through a networking event, and I said, hey. Um, I think you know we can partner up. Um, um, you know we have a lot of businesses coming in. I think it'll be worth your while, and so kind of recruited him and and signed him up. And so, um, so now I think we're down. We're up to like thir thirteen agents. Wow. And okay. I say and I say number just to tell you, but like with the team as well. Like uh, some of those agents are part time. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to get them to produce. It's you know, like I said, it's tough. Yeah. Um, and so. We do. We have about like six or seven that are producing, producing, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just my job now has been a focus of trying to get those people. It's not really for me. Qua, you know, qua, quantity of people now for me. I'm focused on just taking those people that I have, and really just getting the most out of them, yeah. or just kind of putting them in the best positions. Mm -hmm. And so we have those. We have a, a assistant, virtual assistant, uh, been with us. You know, I've had assistant for a while but this one in particular has been the best been with us about two and a half years mm -hmm. uh have a transaction coordinator had an isa uh, up until about seven months ago kind of just kinda saw i didn't know how the kind of the market was going to go so just kind of focused on and kind of got thin a little bit now we'll kind of just see what, what's going to happen but um so that that that's that in a sense and then my my biggest duty or my focus is now been kind of business development and and content marketing Things of that sort, and I and I work with a handful of clients here and there. Mm -hmm. What about the what about lead gen though? So if you're working with uh, buyer agents, like were you were you using Zillow or what? Did you... Yeah, so we, we use Zillow. I don't like I don't like Zillow. Mm -hmm. um, we we did a lot with um, YouTube, in stream ads, things like that. Okay, and that that was that was pretty good. Um, and the, the purpose of our ad specifically, we wanted more. Uh, we didn't really care about 
quality in the sense of more quantity uh, because we just wanted people to raise their hand and then we wanted to kind of uh, um, um, talk with them and, and see who is in a position to buy or sure. who can actually purchase. So, uh, but a lot has been through um, um, again, social media and referrals. Referrals have been good. We do a, we do a home buyer seminar. Actually, we got one coming up on Saturday. Um, and so uh, just kind of just added through the, all those things. How so, are the first time home buyers? I mean, do you work with a title company a lender? Like, how's the turnout? Turnout is good. You know, I've been, and I've talked about this before to, to many other agents, but you know, I, I started doing this 10 years ago, the seminars and mm -hmm. the, the first ones were, was just me and my vendors just in a room, maybe a, a person or two. Right. We used to eat the food and, and get <laughs> out of there. Um, right. now we average about 30, 35 people. So That's it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, and so, you know, people, there's like 60 that sign up, but obviously there's, a, there's, a, there's always a drop. Um, that 2025 is, is all usually kind of a, a good number. So we have uh, generally, uh, we have our myself, our the lender uh, that we've been working with for a while. Uh, I used to have the home inspector, I used to have credit repair, but then, you know, the seminar is long enough anyway. So we have portions that we kind of explain and then, uh, but that's just, it's just us two um, that we do. So my next question, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds with this, but uh, you work with a lot of buyers. You're doing a first-time home buyer seminar coming up. In light of the NAR ruling with the $1.8 billion yeah. lawsuit, I mean, does this come up? How are you handling it? No, yeah, and, and honestly, so I tend to like, because there's a lot of news, and, and sometimes you can get lost to it, and, and, and it scares you, and you just right. And so I tend to not pay attention to too much of that, but this is, I think, a reality that we have to really kind of focus on. And, and so um, part of my business development for next year is really just kind of all right do we really have to start you know turning the corner of we really got to focus on sellers and and you know that was always what you heard initially as well but like we just it, it just came naturally for us as well in terms of buyers and so but now i think i think we really kind of kind of focus on that because I, I don't i don't know where this is going you know there's a lot of things that people hype up especially social media um and then it kind of just phases out but I don't, I don't know if this will will stick. I, I'm I'm not sure. I, I haven't done my due diligence as much as I I need to maybe. But um, so I think I'm just kind of seeing where where things kind of settle. But I think that's up. so it'll be like a little snippet in the home buying seminar about like this is coming up or oh in terms of adding it to the to the seminar. Right. Oh oh no I, I don't I don't think that's something I think that I, I think you're still like if you're doing a home seminar right now you're still just educating home buyers on how the process works. Yeah I think it's it's like yeah. you said, I mean yeah I mean. Nothing, There's so much nothing, information that they're right. not, you know, you, you're not. It might, my, my now I'm, I'm trying to like, you know, take, take it down a notch a little bit of information because there's so much. I'm, you know, trying to fit in all that information within the timeline that you, you don't want to get them bored and, and still kind of get them engaged. There's some things that are, are some of that tend to be very comprehensive. So like, you know, just kind of maybe even cutting things out a little bit. So yeah, I don't think that's something that. I think that conversation needs to have. I think, I mean, uh, yeah. I think we'll kind of see if it does, but I, I don't know. No, I don't think right now. Going back to the the um, the the lawsuits, the class action suits uh, regarding uh, commission sharing and everything. So uh, I appreciate what you're saying because, like, if you're working with buyers, if your model for your team has been working with buyers, if there's going to be a, a shift in how compensation works, obviously that's something that we, you know, you have yeah, to be taken into consideration of right course. now. But I, I just uh, on your opinion, like if if I, whether or not you really put a lot of thought into it, here's what happens to me. I'll tell you what happens to me. Yeah. So at first I was like, okay, a class action lawsuit in Missouri. Um, I, I, I know the names of these companies who, and, yeah. I, and a, it's a chunk of money. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I know that Anywhere, which is the parent company of the Sotheby's brokerage, which is, you know, what we work for, um, uh, settled out of court, which yeah. I don't love the look of. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like we just want this to go away, but yeah. it's like, does that make it go away? Doesn't that open the door for more of this? Right. Yeah. So, it's, so I, 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 I'm, I'm curious because I, I, is, is this gonna make home, uh, you know, home ownership, um, I guess, more costly for buyers? That's the question. Or right? is it, is it gonna be a situation where commissions are cut dr dramatically for, for? For agents, I think there's just a lot of alternatives of things that could happen, including things could e very much stay the same. I mean, yeah. if, if it's because if it was always up to the seller in terms of when yeah. you're taking a listing, what the seller wants to offer is compensation. Exactly. And um, for they're putting it out there as like 
the the case is being made that it's it's a collusion it's of brokerages, yeah. right? Which doesn't never made sense to me yeah. the way they're explaining it, but. I don't know. You know, once these courts get going with this kind of stuff, and they right these these attorneys who are uh, you know want to prosecute this, yeah. it's, it's very tricky. Yeah. So I, I like I said, I, I haven't got into it too much to kind sure. of understand, but that's that's one or the other is going to happen. Right. Again, either either the the buyer's agent is going to have to dish out the money, which is going to make homeownership right. The buyer know, to the buyer's agent. Yeah. yeah. Buyer's, to the buyer's agent, which is going to be, which ultimately means either as a buyer's agent, you, you got to skill up. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of providing what, you know, uh, uh, articulating what your value is in, in, yes, in kind of exactly. the process. Yes. And, and it might weed out a lot of agents, right? Because, right. again, ultimately, as a buyer's agent, you know, you're not necessarily having to have those conversations. Um, mm-hmm. And so that or, like I said, commissions kind of going to get shrunk. So I'm not, like I said, I have to kind of do, yeah, do well, a little bit more due diligence. Like I said, I, I, I tend because there's always something that pops up. Whether it be a lawsuit or this and that, that oh, you know, comes up, and sometimes people lose their minds over it and mm-hmm. kind of just forget to kind of, it just kind of normally kind of goes away. But you know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what this we'll, one does. We'll see. So, so my, my two cents on it is, so from my understanding, to your point earlier, there was a Wall Street Journal article that came out, and banks think that eighty percent of the agents are going to be out of the industry mm-hmm. in years to come. I think that's a farce. That's that's not going to. That's happen. a very sensational yeah. thing to say. Uh, but they're also, again, from my understanding. In the USA, there's only 14 jurisdictions that have buyer agency agreements. We have three of them in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Wow. So we're, we're somewhat protected yeah. because as a listing agent, we are telling the other side, we're taking X amount commission. We're going to offer to the buyer agent this amount. So at least in our practice, we're very upfront with the seller. Like this is what's taking place and this is what we're going to offer. Uh, but I do think that agents have to have a 30-second elevator pitch because in, in my experience – for the last two weeks, whether it's a, a buyer, a seller, an investor, just an end user walking down the street, everyone is asking me the question, like, what's your take on the NAR yeah. ruling? So then you got to be like, boom, and then be yeah. done with it. Yeah. So I, I think what's – I remember the time, I think, you know, it was more traditional where, like, you, you it, was not, it was not uncommon to see a 3% buyer's agent co-op, right? But now, then initially, just kind of just kind of – Gravitate towards the two and a half, yeah. and so I I, I think um, I'm seeing two now. I'm seeing yeah, two I'm seeing come two. across. That's, yeah, I'm seeing some twos. The trend I think it's going to be more where the buyer's agent compensation will kind of be start getting reduced. I think. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of questions, no answers. Instructions. Yeah, instructions will come from places be, higher than us. I know. You know. Yeah, and I think you know, for me, like you, you know, at this point, it hasn't affected us here. Right, you know. Yeah, it's true. So, until it does, you know, business as usual. But I guess maybe kind of focus on what if if that is going to happen. What what how do how do you what would you what would you do in the future? You, what do you have to do? Yeah. So, I hear you. Um, sorry. So, go ahead. Any other questions on that? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, it's S- developing. Switch, developing. <laughs> yeah. So switching gears here, going to marketing. You said twenty four is your year for business development and marketing. Can you tell us like any marketing initiatives you're working on for yourself or the group? Um, it, it's, um, I guess, uh, for me, honestly, it's kind of doing this, the same thing, but just doing, just at a 10x level. Um, you know, when this market kind of shifted, you know, I was telling agents, and whether it be our agents or whether it be you know any panels, things that were on, it's not nothing changes. You just have to do more of the same. You just have to, the numbers has to increase. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're if you're getting one, you know, one lead for 50 calls, you got to do 100, 150 calls now. You know, like so. I'm just kind of giving a number, but you know, whatever it is that you do and what you've been doing, I don't think things need to change. You just have to you have to like to 10 exit and and kind of do more to kind of get the same amount of tr- transactions and volumes. And so, um, I think one of the other one of the things is is as we talked about, just kind of maybe focusing more so on sellers um, a, a little bit more um, than more than we have. And right. so, so that, that's probably the main thing, but just really just kind of doing what we do, but just try to be more efficient and just do more, more of it. Mm-hmm. What that are you very well said. Yeah. Agreed. What are you doing on the back end um, with your group in terms of CRM platform? What are you guys using? Tell us about that. Yeah. So um, 
our main, I guess, CRM, we use the Real Geeks website, and so there's a, there's a CRM on that. But g generally speaking, we, we do a lot of, like, uh, our assistant does a good job with a lot of the, the Google Sheets, and, and we use that. You know, everything's kind of shared, mm -hmm. things of that sort. So, um, again, our main main one would be the, Google, the, the, the Real Geeks CRM that we use. Mm -hmm. um, that's, been, that's been good. Um, and just and then offsetting that with some of the, like just the standard Google sheets and whatnot. She puts things a, a lot of, you know, she's really organized and, and puts a lot of things like that together. We've seen like an you were talking about the market for a second there. Um, we've seen the, definitely an ebbing of the market over the last twelve months or so, and I'm sure that's affected your team in terms of the, you know transactions and people are like, can I do this anymore? Yeah. Um, would you say that? Uh, you know, w being in the business and locations that you're in is how much of it is interest rate j driven? I mean, do you find that a lot of buyers are just like they, they just have to completely step aside right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I think, but we are. It, it definitely is interest rates, right? Um, but I tell people too, and you know, the, the silver lining in interest rate is. Do you remember when during the pandemic and rates were two and a half? You know, it was you were saying the same thing. It was it was a crazy market, right? Yeah. So. And you know it was nearly impossible to to to, to get a home. Um, yes, you'll pay. You, you would pay less, or maybe not actually. Maybe because not. You, you're, you're you're paying more on the sales price. Um, you know, so the 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 dialogue right now to, to buyers and to the agents and, and kind of what the scripture is the script is, is going to be to buyers is right now. Yes, I mean if you are in a position to afford a home and your monthly payment, you're able to kind of afford that and be comfortable. You can take advantage because there's definitely a lot less competition. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are out because as soon as and I, I've been saying this, as soon as rates start to drop a little bit, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be crazier than it was during the pandemic. I think people that were off, you know, that took off, that paused because of rates are going to come back, come back on the market. And I think people that are maybe were focusing on buying in 2025 and 2026, they're like, you know, what well, we never know what rates are going to do. Let's jump on the market now. Um, so. But we are in a very recession-proof area. There's a lot of there's a lot of money in this area. Yeah. And so transactions have definitely dropped. But I tell my agent like people are still buying and selling. Um, but I think that 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 has to be the number one um, like factor in for, a, sense for a lot of buyers. For, for really a lot is. of buyers, for sure. It really is. And I. Um, but recently, it's interesting. The uh, uh, rates came down a little bit over the last couple of weeks, yeah. when, as of this recording. Um, but. Uh, I ran into two multiple offer situations in Northwest DC. Like there were sort of like the old school multiple offer situations yeah. that I saw like 12 to 16 months ago. Yeah. And I was like, what just happened? Like yeah. I thought we yeah, could eat, we'll go in and make an offer and have a normal, normal thing. System, no, it's yeah. like three pre-inspections were yeah. happening. And yeah. so it doesn't take much. No. Is what, you know what I mean? No. And I think it's, it's, it's especially this market, it's all specific locations. You know, some locations are still red hot. I mean, we're, we're still dealing with multiple offers and, certain in certain scenarios and different price points as well right but um yeah i think people see if and again any 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 <laughs> drop i think will start to lure people out mm -hmm. and i think you'll see that more and more and 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 but again i tell buyers right now i mean you know generally speaking you have less competition you have better opportunity to protect yourself so the goal is again not to say when rates will drop, but the goal is once rates drop, I think ultimately that refinance option. But even that more so, once rates drop, I think it's going to start driving prices even more up as well because I think you have more of those buy. You know, the demand is going to jump jump back on the market. So, I think um, there's still like a lot of aspirational aspects to the housing market always have have been, and so I think a lot of buyers still have that dream. Yeah, and it's really it's like if you give them just a little bit of like kindling, right? Yeah, they'll they'll be excited for it. Well, because you know, once you set a precedent of what the norm is, and then anything below that, then people get excited, right? Like if if rates have been eight percent for a while, right. then then it goes to you know seven and a quarter. Like, God, this is my chance. They're right. gonna jump. It's you very know, true. It, it's this it's kind of human nature. Yeah, I think even it's, we we haven't even talked about sellers. Sellers are some sellers are dying to sell, you know, just waiting for rates to kind of go. And I think so. That's that side as well because again, there's people that I think I just read an article. People feel trapped in their home now because now they yeah, have that I great rate. I saw that. Yeah. But like, exactly. that's, it. That, that's it. This is my. I guess this is my forever home. Yeah. So I think they. They're they forever rate. Any, any trend down, okay. This is this is our chance. Yeah. You know? yeah. For me, I'm telling buyers, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a farce, but I'm like, it's a thirty percent swing in the price, right? Because in the good market, when there's multiple offers across the board, you're fifteen to twenty percent over list. Yeah. And now. 
you know, listing agents can shoot me, but I'm like, let's go in 20% off of list price. Yeah. And maybe we get it at 10 or 15. And we've ratified a few been... deals at like 10% off of list yeah. price. And sellers don't even think twice. They're just like, let's go on to the next one. And I think, and to Max, your point, we're in a multiple offer situation this morning. Uh, I think buyers see the value. So we wrote on a property in Potomac, great detached house, needs some work. It was $700,000. Everything in the neighborhood is selling for like eight fifty to nine hundred. Yeah. So it's like that situation is there's eight offers on the table. He's expecting a wow. couple of more by noon. Mm -hmm. So in your case in Chevy or Northwest DC, was, mm -hmm. in your opinion, was that house undervalued? Um, I think it's I think it's normally valued in terms of yeah. what the asking price was. Yeah. Um, I just think that uh, the size of the house, it had four bedrooms up, whereas a lot of houses in that range would only have three. Mm -hmm. It was in very good condition, not a brand spanking new renovation like yeah. you see in a lot of these houses. It was like a normal re level of renovation. Yeah. Um, I don't know, just perfect storm of people yeah. all at once. Inventory is still low, like in Upper yeah, West, oh, yeah. uh, Upper Northwest, there's just not a lot of stuff. If you're looking in AU Park, what, there's like two places Yeah, there's the very, very little. Take your pick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what's changing. Inventory is, is a huge part mm -hmm. uh, of all this madness as well. Right. But I tell cli clients as well, I'd rather pay a higher interest rate than a higher sales price. Like, I, I, can, I can change. You can change. I can right. change the rate. Smart. You know, you can never change the sales price. Never, right? You know, so like, you always got to keep that in mind as well. Like, you can, you can. The the goal is, you know, the, the rate can change, and you can always kind of get out of there and just kind of get that monthly payment lower. Sales price is sales price. Right. You you paid one hundred fifty over, it's one hundred fifty over. <laughs> that's what that's that's, that's Brent's thing. That's what you're always like. Get the yeah. price as low as you can yeah. as a buyer. Like whatever it takes. I yeah, mean, you got to do what you got to do. But yeah. like that's the idea. Yeah. Um, so one of our classics here. Um, uh, what would you tell a younger you? If you like, if you're starting off, starting over again in this business, yeah. What, what's ne some advice? Never, never take the pedal or your your foot off the gas. You know, I think sometimes you get in a position. I think this is life, but like you get, you know, you you, you get some success and maybe you start doing some things that was working and, and this and that. But like, I think ultimately, I think you just you just because first and foremost, you don't know when things shift in this market. You just never know anything. So I think my younger self would be never let off the gas mm -hmm. like just just go you know just go and i would say that to anybody too like you just have to continue to do the things that are working and can be consistent at that um this you know this this industry could be brutal you know can turn quick and so you you just have to be prepared you know you just ultimately uh, you you want to be in a position where you have options and so that's that's what i would probably that's great advice. I mean, I, I see it so many times in our industry, in our office. Agent has a huge commission, a newer agent, and then they take off to California, overseas, yeah. what have you. It's yeah. like they spend their commission, and yeah. then like, if you're not working, you're not earning. Yeah, exactly. So that's smart. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah, you, you don't want to be on the roller coaster. I mean, that's definitely a roller coaster of, you know, people start doing the things that got them to where they need to be, the lead generation, and just, you know, being focused. And then they get a few things under contract and, and that's why I was like, you know, part of the thing I tell agents is once you have a deal under contract, you can buy it, uh, other things into negotiation. There's no more money to be made on that. You know, that's why like you can't right. focus on how how many transactions you have in a pipeline, like it's or in trans under contract. It's all about, you know, the next, the filling the pipeline up, filling the pipeline, and just kind of focusing on that. It's never so. That's why you can always agents, newer agents, always on that roller coaster. I have great months, and they stop doing what they're supposed to be doing, and then back to the. To the, to the floor and then you know they start lead generating and doing those things and then back here so you just have to yeah it's a consistency you know when i when i, I when i look at our sheet um of like what we have under contract that's going to closing i like to me that's like the past that's history yeah, it's, yeah. And, and it's almost like it's almost a little depressing i mean it's like yes i know there's a commission check yeah. on the date that settles but it's but done it's done yeah it's done yeah well, what 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 clients do you have in the pipeline and what what are people listing sell, buys you know what buyers are taking you you're taking on the road you know that's that's really the most important part, and it's important because that makes you a better agent. I tell agents, like, if you only have one agent, uh, one under contract or uh, one one transaction, right? If that deal is gonna start to kind of break, I don't care how good of a person you are. Subconsciously, you know that your your money is about to be it's about to be gone. All right. So you may not be in the right, even if you you're you know subconsciously it's going to happen something's going to happen where you may not be in a position where you're going to advise that age or that that client maybe in the correct way because there's that portion of it 
Whereas, you know, you fill the pipeline, you have, you know, multiple transactions, you, you're not just focusing on that being your livelihood. And so that, that makes you a better agent as well. I think regardless of, you know, your morals and all that, it always has something to do with it. Like, so you owe it, it you owe it to yourself and your clients to make sure that you're working and, and busting your ass so that way you can ultimately be a better agent and, and for that, for, for, for your clients. That's great saying. I was talking to an agent last week and they put something under contract in uh, Northwest DC. And I was like, man, you ever pay? We have something under contract very similar for like half a million less. He was like, I haven't had to sell it in like six months. Yeah, yeah. It's not my money. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, I'm yeah. like, wow. Yeah. No, great I mean, for the buyer. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, everybody's, you know, no matter, everybody's a good person and, and they have good, good intentions, but when it, people got to eat. Yeah. And so when it comes to, <laughs> People got when it comes to money. People do crazy stuff, you know, crazier than stuff than that, right? So like, you have to put yourself position yourself in a position where you're not, uh, you're not susceptible to that. And so that that goes to the fact that that's why you have to, you know, work hard so that way your pipeline is. Yeah. Straight. You know, you're you not don't ever want to be. You're that. not worried about you know. Desperation. You know, yeah, it's desperation. Does, no one wears that well, man. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's not. So that, that's that's important. That's important. So you work with. Um, uh, you, you said your team is roughly 13 agents right mm -hmm. now. Um, you know, markets had some ups and downs. So if you let, and I, I get this too. Like I get people reaching out to me, especially on social media, like, oh, I'm looking to get in the real estate business. Yeah. Um, what's, give me like your top couple pieces of advice for when someone reaches out. Cause it's like, it's like, hey, industry's full. It's, yeah. it's you know, there's no. always new people coming in. No, always please. new people I mean, like, in. I, right. I don't, I don't discourage anybody from coming in, but yeah. I, I have people that, 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 Call me or text me or DM me and say, "Hey, I want to get into real estate." I said, "Great, this is the steps." Mm -hmm. Go like in, in terms of you just, I, you, I was, just, you just you just break it down. I, like, I, I want them to because what I'm saying is, if somebody tells me, "Okay, I got my license," that's a different. But if, if somebody comes to me and says, "Hey, I'm thinking about going to real estate," um, if they ask me specific questions, I'll answer. Sure. But what I'm saying, some people say, "What should I do?" Hey, here are the steps. Go do it because majority of people won't even do it. Right. Right, and I'm not gonna waste my time. If you, go ahead and get your license first and foremost. Like, if if you're interested, if they have specific questions, right, then we'll, we'll kind of get into it. Um, like I said, some people will reach out and they basically say, "Hey, you know, what do I have to do? What does it take to be successful in real estate?" And maybe we can kind of go into that. But um, I I always tell people, like, there's it's not what you see on TV. Like again, real estate right now is then. It's kind of the trendy, sexy thing. There's so many shows, right? There's so many. I think they're they're creating a, um, a Las Vegas version of like an ex maybe a selling center. Like it's 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 sexy. It's it's fun. It's exciting. But like it, it has, it's nowhere near what you think it is. Right. Right. So there's a lot of work into it. There's a lot of agents that you're gonna fight. You probably everybody in your family probably knows five agents. So it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Right. But for those that are willing to put their work the work in. And grind and and really just focus. It's amazing. You get a great life for yourself, and enjoy what you do. You know, so I'm all of I'm. You know, I don't like to to, to handhold, and I just tell people, hey, like if you're willing to do the work, the potential is there. Right. But you know, don't think this is what it is. Like, things that you're seeing on Netflix and or even just the Instagram reels people yeah, see these yeah, incredible like, properties yeah. like oh well all I have to do is show this reel and exactly. I'm, I'm getting paid like 25 yeah. yeah and that's that's you know and so just helping them understand this is not you know it's much much more than what you see you know everybody's posting highlights and that's that's what you do right but like there's what happens you know in the offices in the you know in, in the transaction that people don't don't see the uh, the inspections the appraisals the the calls, the rejections, you know, the open houses with nobody there, all these things. Like, you know, the the people are like, oh, I want to get into, why do you want to get into business? You know, I just want to, I want to, flexibility in what I work. There's no flexibility. It's when you start out, there's no, uh, you got to work when it's, when when somebody wants you to work. Yeah. You know, when you want to get, you know, if, if you don't want to work. It's the opposite of you know, flexibility. Yeah, it's the opposite. <laughs> you know, maybe you build up to that. Right. But um, so I think it's just making them realize that, uh, you know, that, this perception of what you see online and that sexiness of real estate at this point, it's, it's not, it's much more, it's much more. That's probably the, uh, the foundation of the lawsuit. It's like the, all these attorneys and consumers see, it's like, Oh, I'll make a yeah. phone call and I made $600,000 commission. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly how it works. And I'm pretty sure they don't know where the breakdown of all that goes. Yeah, exactly. To, you know, 
the breakdown I, of everything that 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 happens that you pay out that um, you have to do. I think they understand that real estate agents are your business. You know, there's there's business expenses. There's all. So I, I don't think they. But yeah. So we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. see. But going back to that topic just one more time and not to play like both sides ism, <laughs> but like you, you know that there are plenty of realtors out there who don't do a great job. Yeah. And so and and there are consumers who are who, th who think like this realtor got paid X dollars. They didn't do anything for me. They didn't show yeah. up at this. They didn't you know, why? Why should they get this paid this? And then, you know, an attorney comes along and says, we're going to do a class action suit. Do you want to be in the class action? Suit? You're like, hell yeah. Yeah. I would like to of get course, some money back. Of course, of they course. might be your local barista at Starbucks in that eighty percent that the banks are quoting in uh, the Wall Street Journal. They'll be out of business in a couple of years. Yeah. Right? No, absolutely. There's definitely, um, definitely people that don't do, don't do anything or had have had, didn't represent their client the right way or didn't do anything really to kind of absolutely. provide value to a transaction, and the client sees mm -hmm. on the altar how much they've made. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a sometimes a, a good feeling for them. Yep. So, do you have any predictions for 2024? Man, nothing at all. Like, no, <laughs> no. I mean, you know, I've, I, I've seen. I'm, mean, you know, from what I've read, what I've seen, I, I think rates will start to definitely come down. From what I've seen, maybe and, and probably middle, maybe Q Q2. Um, so, I, like I said, I really think when that when that happens, it's going to be a, a, a craziness. I think it's really going to be. A wild, wild market. I think when I read is, is when they when they when they polled sellers, homeowners, at what percentage would you be open or comfortable listing your home? I think that five five and a half percent is something that there is that. So agree, if yeah. it gets anywhere near that, it's it's going to be chaos. Right. And so so twenty four is better than twenty three. I, I think so. Maybe I think going in right now, I think these next few months are going to be pretty. Um, I think you got to really really work i think it's going to be uh, you know just naturally going into this yeah the winter, the winter months yeah. tends tends to be a little bit lower but i think just because of where we're at so given it's election year as well so but i think once i think once uh, throw it all we'll in the see. blender and see what yeah we'll yeah. see i don't know like i i about you know one of the, another thing i tell agents is like you can't you can't feed into that's why i don't do that you can't feed because it's self-fulfilling prophecy but when i i remember when i started they said oh winter it gets it gets pretty dry and so, like, you start believing it, you don't. You're not going to have business. But there are still people buying and selling. Absolutely. There are people. And, like, I've had some of the best months in those, you know, December, January, right? So, like, you cannot get lost in the talk. All you can do is, I mean, do the things that work. Just keep working. Yeah, just keep working. That's that's what it don't. You can't listen to. Understand that you have to be aware of what's happening. But I, I, you can't you can't really get lost in it, honestly, because it, it, it feeds into your feeds into kind of your mind, your lead generation, your what psyche. you're doing. Yeah, you're just, yeah. So I think. Totally agree. Think well, we have the it. weather pattern this year. El Nino is supposed to bring a lot of snow in February and March. And I'm like, is that what oh, it is? man, okay. I hope not. That's a, that, that is another thing. When I see that headline, I'm like, come on. Come I'm like, put that, on, put that on the wall and yeah. then we'll see. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Weatherman staying here. Um, let's see. Yanni Kifley, thank you so much for coming uh, down, This man. was great. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for thank sharing so time with for, us. Thanks uh, the honor to talk to you guys. And uh, Brent's got some rapid fire questions for you. All right, let's do it. Five easy questions. Here we go. What is your food kryptonite? Food kryptonite? Okay, uh, so I've been trying to get off like carbs too much, but I'm Ethiopian. Okay, I was born in Ethiopia, Ethiopian American. Um, uh, Ethiopian main dish is injera. I don't know if you guys have had Ethiopian food. Is that the bread? The bread. Yeah. But like, the, but like, you know, that's that's the meal. It's it's the, the yeah, bread that's, and it's then on the sauces. Right. Got it. So like, you know, it's just, it's it's the one thing when you eat it, you know. You want to take a nap, yeah. two or three, because it's so full. So like I, yeah. but that's that's my my go to is that like it's 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 that. And I, but I've been trying to, really trying to get off like carbs and and whatnot. Just kind of doing a. But do you do you cook your own? Eat no, your I food? No, no, I don't. No, I don't. No. So this is plenty a of mom is in Woodbridge, okay, and, and there's plenty of uh, restaurants. Around. Yeah. This, so that's a that's a one A for this. So mom's in Woodbridge. Is there another Ethiopian restaurant in D.C. that? Listeners can go to. Um, yeah, I mean, um, that you frequent. So, uh, there's to be right on a ninth and U is uh, Habasha Market. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. That used to be a, a, a like a nightlife type of thing too. It used to be open late. Okay, and that used okay. To be great. After you went out, that was to be great. So that that's that. Uh, uh, Tsai, uh restaurant and bar on on uh, on um, Anna's Morgan. We just did actually did a uh, business spotlight on this. Tsai, Tsai, T S E H A Y. 
sa uh, restaurant and bar. Invite in, um, again, Adams Morgan. Okay. Just open up. Uh, 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 um, amazing. A lot of awards. Uh, well, they I have will, a, a, they have the full Ethiopian ceremony. On, 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 you can reserve a full Ethiopian ceremony. It's really good. Nice. Uh, the own, one of the owners used to be a, a, a main bartender at Front Page, mm -hmm. uh, and so his his uh, cocktails, cocktail skills, and, and wine selection, all that's amazing as well. So you'll you'll enjoy that for sure. Um, awesome. In Virginia, there's a it actually called Injeta in, in uh, restaurant. That's an another one in, right in Crystal City as well. Okay. Jetta. It's good, good tips. Yeah. So number two, aside from Rich Dad Poor Dad, what's your favorite audio book? I know you listen to audio books. Um, so one of one of my, uh, I guess, I guess mentors in the sense of who I've listened to, especially my, is is Grant Cardone. Now Grant Cardone, a lot of like controversy. I don't know if you guys know, but like he 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 started he, um, his his career in sales training and. He still has a part of it, but now he's in, in real estate big time. They have funds and, and whatnot. But uh, his his book, The 10X Rule, is by far the, the book that's kind of um, kind of helped me, right? So it takes 10 times more than you think it takes to kind of get to a level where you want to go. And so people over underestimate how much work it takes. And so, but that's a great uh, book. Um, audio book, I, I'm not, um, Either so, one, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's one I would say. What are you currently binge watching? Uh, I'm I'm all about comedy, sitcoms, and whatnot. Right now, I'm actually just binge watching Scrubs. Scrubs. Uh, so I've been watching Scrubs. I, I forgot how great of a show it is. I, and I just so I pick a show. So my favorite shows are just more so just all the comedy that you can think of. That's the an easy Office. thing to do. You can just put on like just a sitcom put on in the Office, background. Office, Seinfeld. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a big Blair David guy. So Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. Uh, He's good. Uh, Parks and Rec. So just I've watched I all those like multiple times. Multiple, like me, yeah. it's multiple times. I, I, I'm just about the comedies and just laughing. We just started watching uh, Modern Family, Modern especially Family. Like the little Family. kids. Family. Love so good. How love amazing it. is that show where you see the kids grow up? Like it's yeah. it's crazy to me. Like that's it's, a great it's, show. Yeah, it's a great show. I love all those. Well, we watched the first two or three seasons, and then we stopped watching it. And I didn't realize it's gone on for eleven seasons, yeah. and now they're like married with kids. kids and yeah, it's like, like crazy. I, I I I watched it straight through. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah. So your favorite basketball team? Uh, I'm a big Kobe fan, uh, so I'm a Lakers guy. Um, uh, Kobe was my guy, my 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 idol, the Mamba mentality. I I have a lot of tats. You can't see anything, but like, you know, I have Kobe's Mamba mentality here. Uh, I have the definition of Mamba mentality, is a, and this is a quote I I live by: a constant quest to be the best version of yourself. If you just live by that quote, you'll, you you it won't do you wrong. So Lakers, to answer your question. Um, so you're not a favorite. You're not a LeBron fan, are you? So, so you know, I I, I understand the reason why. Is, so my 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 brother or my friends are big LeBron fans, and we always used to f go against because they used to try to compare him to Kobe. I, I don't I don't think it's a LeBron is a is is a talent freak of nature. Respect to him, but I like Kobe's to me. It's literally, I mean, it's it's Jordan and Kobe to me, and so. But you know, when he moved to the Lakers. I was kind of, I, you know, I didn't know how to feel about that, but you know, I, I, he's he's a talent. There's no denying it. Right. But I'm a Lakers guy. Yeah. Yeah. Last question here. You're working around the clock. You're very busy, very successful. Where do you go to vacation and just unwind? Um, somewhere, somewhere hot for sure. Right. Um, uh, I just came back from the Bahamas. Bahamas was great. Um, another tip for I, this is an idea that I had. Any anywhere that I go now, I just try to connect with an agent there, and um, I, I'm kind of do like a property tour there as well so it, it, you smart. get something out it's, it's pretty cool and people love seeing what other areas yeah, can get. Really I, I went to i went to charlotte from like a little family vacation i, I connected with somebody there and like it was like a for four hundred thousand dollars it was a single family home big backyard people were going crazy like this is crazy. you can't even get a condo here you can't you know so people like, just i like that idea that. i like that idea like just wherever you travel like yeah, just go try, just, just do something i mean you first connect yeah. with that agent yeah. and you know kind of get a better idea of the market and have somebody that you can refer people to, but it's always good content as well. Yeah. So, awesome. so you're doing social media posts. So you'll go there. You'll, you'll yeah, I'll do it. Like if you go there, the last okay. one, I just I, I yeah, went I to the Bahamas. Yeah, we went connected with somebody there. We looked at a 3.3 million penthouse condo. It was Sick. beautiful. Um, and you know, people That's love awesome. that. People love that. Before that, I was in Puerto Rico. Uh, oh no, I was in Can uh, Cancun. Saw mm -hmm. that as well. So you know, it, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Just engagement, and you know, people love seeing stuff like that. That's sharp. Thanks for All right, Yanni, man. Absolutely. Thanks for coming down. Absolutely. Thank you.
Thanks for listening to Keyed In with your hosts, Max and Brent, unlocking the minds of the industry's top real estate professionals. For more information on selling your home, find us online at keyedinpodcast.com. Remember to subscribe to Keyed In on Apple Podcasts or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at Keyed In Podcast, at Rabin Max, and at Brent E. Jackson. And follow Max on TikTok at Maxwell Rabin underscore properties.